Artist, what was that? No intro, no skit? Look, Sunmo, I don't even know where you've been, but we got so much stuff that we need to focus on, and now we have some more rivals that are showing up too. What do you mean, rivals? Let me give you an idea of who we're going up against. As the sealed only landscape changes, we have to make sure that we stay on top of it. There are rivals everywhere that we need to watch out for, and some of them haven't even gotten touched by this ban list. Take, for example, Reigning Card Games, leader of sealed only Dragoonity. He has a starship rating of 7. For some, it's not even combo decks that we even need to watch out for. This duelist in particular likes to bring people down to her speed. This one is the Ghost Trick Gal. Control deck master and a beautiful bully. She has a star chip rating of 5. As we get higher among the ranks, there's some other duelists that we eventually will run into. These duelists have a particular set of skills and quality to their content. They're the ones that are really going to give us a run for our money. Just like the passionate painter, Ruggles. He has a star chip rating of 8. But we also do have other sealed only competitors that we do need to watch out for. And spellcasters similar to dragons are some of the most supported franchise. This duelist in particular, the Mash Charmer, Demo. He has a star chip rating of 6. And even to finish it off, with the ban list being what it is, there's still other people that we need to watch out for. Such as Banish for Cost, leader of the deck building wolf pack. He has a star chip rating of 7. All in all, we don't even know where the next rival could come from. It could be even one of our viewers. Alright, so we got a few things, a few products here. Uh, some Charmer decks that we're going to be getting into and a little bit of Rise of the Duelist. So that way we can possibly get the, uh, the Link Monster for the Ancient Warriors and hopefully actually have some more viable combos. But before we get into any of this, whether it be this or the decks, I kind of wanted to not really uh, show you guys anything, but really just give an announcement. I'll be giving away one of my Divine Arsenal Zeus's when we hit 500 uh, subscribers. So again, this is a really, really good uh, Exceed monster. Works with most Exceed decks. Primarily, it's been seeing a lot of play in Zodiacs, uh, but I'm not sure when this episode comes out because this is gonna be episode uh, four. So whenever this does come out, uh, if this is before 500 subs, then this card will probably already be given away. But if it's not, if we're still kind of like trying to get to 500 subs, uh, then this card will have uh, been given away to one person in uh, in the comments of this video, right? So that's gonna be the main thing. That's how I'll be deciding. Uh, basically put your, I guess, your favorite card in the comments. Um, and one other thing you can actually do while you're doing this, I'm not gonna set like a gleam thing, really just put your favorite card in the comments uh, and I guess I'll just choose from that. But another thing that you can do is if you're looking at this amazing uh, playmat that I have here, this Sunriser uh, Smash playmat, this was actually made by a casual card gamer who's running a few different series on his uh, on his YouTube channel. He has Out of the Box, which is a collaborative series with him, uh, JC Theater Yu-Gi-Oh! and Golden Nova, where they're basically challenging each other uh, out of a series of sets that are releasing. It's a really, really cool series, and he's also doing some new sort of like news type of format where he's giving updates on upcoming products and things. So if you guys ever want to get any of the awesome play mats that he's designed or the awesome sleeves that he's designed as well, head over to his channel. There'll be a link for his channel in the description below. Um, and again, tell him that your boy Artist with a Fro sent you over there. Other than that, of course, if we do get to 500 subs, this card will be given away to one person in the comments. Uh, so just make sure you stay tuned for that. Now, I'm going to move that over to the side here. We do have the cards that we are going to be looking for primarily in the structure deck. I think the only thing that we really need is Dark Ruler No More. I'm checking the back of this. I know Raigeki comes in here, so I guess that that could be good. There's also Effect Veiler and uh, Denko Seka. But other than that, I don't think that there's really anything else. Solemn Warning might be worth it. Some tokens as well. But really, the Dark Ruler No More. And the Twin Twisters might actually be a much better card for the side deck instead of the uh, instead of the, um, the Cosmic Cyclones. But we'll have to see. 
I feel like, you know, having the added effect of destroying two cards at the same time as opposed to just one, it works, but it's also like one of those things where destroying cards is very tricky, right? You never want to kind of go for that method because there are certain cards that like if they're destroyed, they get to do like an extra thing or they kind of come back and it's always like it's like damn, like I just wanted to get rid of the card. So, I feel like that's why I gravitate more towards Cosmic Cyclone. I feel like the banishing, even though it is for a thousand life points, it's like that's that's perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm I'm more than down to spend a thousand. All right. So, where is the pull tab on this thing? I I see the the string here, but where Oh, here it is. All right, so let's get this one open. I actually like this uh, this token here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's Alsa and Hita, and they are basically just like cleaning up the the floor. Well, Alsa's well, Hita's doing the cleaning. Alsa's kind of just there reading. So it's a really cool looking token. We also have, of course, our ultra rares. Unfortunately, we really can't use any of these. Raigeki is actually a really good card. That might go into our side deck there. Uh, but out of all of these, Fairy Tail Luna is also a great card to have. Um, for any deck that can run it, first off, Spellcasters, but it's really, really good for any deck that runs Kaijus as well. Witch of the Black Forest, we already have the effect bailers in the side uh, from last episode and from the structure decks that we got it in there. Um, Secret Village, we can't really use. Terraforming, we have nothing for that. Twin Twisters, but Dark Ruler No More is going into the main deck, uh, primarily to stop all of the heavy combo decks. So that way we can actually like kind of fight against them. Solemn Warning, I think I want to hold on to too. But for the most part, we'll keep the token and I'll move some of these cards over. If you guys want any of the cards over here, uh, usually what I'll do in my streams is I'll add these cards to what I call the giveaway binder. And I'll actually grab that so you guys can see here. The giveaway binder we have here uh, is really just full of cards that I've amassed through the sealed only episodes. And uh, pretty much I just put cards in here and you guys can duel me for the chance to win them and I mail them out to you. So it's a cool way to interact with uh, the folks that have helped and supported the channel. And really it's, again, my whole theory around it is like, I'm not gonna hold, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Like I'm not gonna make a Charmer deck. I think that um, there actually is another YouTuber. I'm gonna link him in the, in the description as well. There's another YouTuber that's doing a sealed only Charmer deck. Um, but for me, it's like, I'm not gonna play any of these cards. So I'd rather not hold on to them. And I'd rather give them away to someone that, you know, might actually want to use them. I think that that's one of the things that I realized very early on is that I was going to kind of like come to if, I, if I'm spending all this money on, on sealed product. It's like I'm going to have a, a mass of cards that I'm not going to want to hold on to. So how do I, how do I somehow manage uh, having all of this inventory? And it's just like, eh, I'll just give this away. I really have no reason to. That's not to say that we don't have a shop. We actually do have a TCG player shop. Uh, some of the cards that you guys are seeing over here, we do uh, sell on our TCG player shop. So you can check that out. I'll have a link to that in the description. It's all just links today. Uh, but no Link Monster. Well, hopefully we can get a Link Monster from that uh, structure deck. Not the structure deck, but from the Rise of the Duelist booster packs. You know, it'd be really cool if we get a... Uh, uh, actually, if we get anything, basically, a Dogmatica card, a... Uh, uh, what's, gonna call it? what's it called? Triple Tactic Talents, any of those things. Forbidden Droplets, that'd be really cool to pull. So we've got Familiar Possess Win, all of these. So on and so forth, another Raigeki. Again, like I said, like I'm not going to be using any of these, but I know that there are some people out there that could use some of the cards that we're showing. It's like mainly we only bought this for one card. Uh, two, possibly with Twin Twisters, but mainly for the Dark Ruler No More. So those are going to go straight into the main deck, and that's going to be it. And potentially, or hopefully, we can pull the Shuang Long, a.k.a. Big Shlong, but he's not called that anymore, right? He's called Double Dragon Lords. Oh my gosh, they butchered his name when it they localized it. I'm like, come on now. I know people, I know us as Yu-Gi-Oh players, like there are two cruxes for every Yu-Gi-Oh player. I feel like we can't, uh, we can't, <laughs> we don't read the cards. We really don't like reading card effects, but we also can't pronounce certain cards too. You'll have people say stuff like Igneister. I'm like, bro, how? How did you even come to that? But that's besides the point. That's neither here nor there. We got, I think, eight packs here. Let me actually just count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight packs here of Rise of the Duelist. It's one of the most expensive sets. Like this, this I feel kind of like puts us over the budget, but I'm not even really sure. But all we're looking for is just one card. And this is one of those things where it's like, I've really, really had to 
have to reconsider ever doing another sealed only or if i am it's like i'm going to make sure that it's something that there's already three structure decks so i don't have to buy that many cards out of it but starting off we have fluffle dolphin uh dogmatica encounter and knowing my luck i'm actually going to pause here knowing my luck all of the ancient warrior cards are probably going to be reprinted or something in like the 20 uh 21 mega tins or in like some side set where like you just get all of them like i i feel like something like that would happen uh, we get Infernal, Infernoble Knight Oliver, so that's not going to be helpful. But we do have East by South Winds. I don't know if we can actually use that card or not. We'll have to see. It's an Ancient Warrior card, so maybe? Uh, question mark? I don't know. Maybe maybe we can. I have no idea. Dogmatica Nexus. Diced. Dice. Diced. Dice. Okay, that's... Oof. That is a card that is hard to pronounce. We have Melfi Fenny, Thunderhand, DD Dog, uh, Vespinato, Full, Junk Sleep, and Red Potan. Nothing yet, but we do still have uh, our six packs left. So hopefully we can get lucky and get one of the cards there. Fright for Repair, Unauthorized Boot Up, Dark Lord Uprising, Dogmatic and Nexus, Nemesis Keystone for the Nemesis cards, another East by Softwinds, and the other Dark Lord card. So we have the one that's facing left and then the one that's facing the right side. Five more packs. Again, we're only looking for one card in here, and it's the Ancient Warrior Link Monster. So if we pull him, then that's good. We don't have to get really open up any of the rest of these cards. But if we don't then it's not going to be looking too good for us. That, that is the third East by South Winds. And you know what they say, uh, when Lu Xuan and his brothers had to do, again, three visits, when that <laughs> when that had to happen, um, they basically visited uh, Zhu Gekong or Zhu Ge Liang uh, three times. So since we got our third one, I'm hoping, you know, maybe we can pull an Ancient Warrior. No, it's an Infernoble Knight. We got Astolfo. It seems like this was like a the same thing that we just pulled. Like it looked like that had the same uh, set, the same type of cards. We got about three packs left. All right, so we we got three East by South winds. So the, there's hope that maybe we got Melfi Mommy, Melfi Playhouse. There's a link there, but I don't know if that's the Hollow. Nope. Yan Yan Nabe Party. Super Heavy Samurai Fright for Jar. Math Meg Diameter. All right, let's do this. The uh, I don't know, the, the classic way where you take like four from the back and you move them up to the front. So that way the last card there is the uh, the card that we need to get. So one, two, three, four, they're going to go there. This is the card, hopefully. It is the uh, the Ancient Warrior card. We have Horn of Oldefant, Melfi Pony, Dogmatica Punishment. Really, really good for Dogmaticas. I think it actually got an upgrade uh, reprint in the OTS 15 packs. Fright for Repair, uh, Abyss Actor Twinkle, Little Star. Curse Dragon, Curse of Dragon, Dark Lord Uprising, and it's a Synchro. Huh, Rampaging Smashed Rhino Saber. Huh, Smash Tank Rhino Saber. Can't use it. And our last pack. Oh boy. This is going to be interesting because I, I, I'm not looking forward to buying more uh, Rise of the Duelists. I really am not. Just for one card? Are you kidding me? All we need is Ancient Warrior Dragon's Oath. Double Oath, uh, Double Dragon Lords. All right. The four feet East by South Winds. Edgem Scythe, Megalith Full, Capricious Dark Lord, Twinkle Little Star, Melfi Playhouse, Melfi Mommy, and it's a fusion. Uh, the first Dark Lord. All right. Well, we didn't get any. We, we didn't get lucky with this, unfortunately. We got most of the cards that we already kind of like had, but nothing that we can really add of substance to the deck from Rise of the Duelist, so that means that we're going to have to pick up more of those packs in the future. However, we did get some good cards. I feel like East by South Winds I'll look at, because maybe there's a way we can run it, but I'm not really I'm not really feeling it, to be honest. We did get the two Dark Ruler No More, so that's going to be an actual addition to the uh, to the main deck. Uh, we got, you know, we really don't need any more effect veilers. We kind of already have enough of them, but we did get two Twin Twisters, uh, two Raigekis, and the Solemn Warning. In fact, we should have more than one, um, but I think that based on the traps that we run, we're probably not going to be putting those cards in. So let's see. We'll, we'll have a good update for the side deck, if anything, but the main deck isn't really going to see uh, much of a change. So I guess that's going to be kind of like the, the upgrades that we're doing to our deck today. So I'll switch over. Um, we'll update basically the side deck and take out some cards for the main deck. Now that we have the Dark Rulers, I think that we are one step closer to getting it complete 
And I think there's only one other archetype that we need to include into the decks now to make them really viable. Again, the giveaway is going out for the double A Divine Arsenal, double A Zeus uh, at 500 subs. So if we have reached that by the time episode four comes out, uh, then this card will have been given out. But if it's not, um, then it's gonna be given out after this video uh, by the comments. So make sure you put in the comments what your favorite card is. Make sure you also check out Casual Card Gamers for some really cool play mats as well. Um, and yeah, let's get into the deck. Well, 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 here we are, facing off against one of the rivals you saw earlier in this video. The sealed-only Dragoonity Master himself, reigning card games. However, he's not really using sealed-only Dragoonity for this duel. This was actually a full match, and I think this might have been either Game 2 or Game 3. We're currently using the current build of Ancient Warriors, and we're going up against reigning card games' Thunder Dragon Chaos build. Now, I also have another supporter on the channel, uh, Brianac or Brio, which also goes by Delinquent Duo. You can check her out for some really, really cool and awesome card extensions. However, she also plays a Thunder Dragon deck, so I feel like I have some experience. The only problem is the experience that I have is not with this build of the deck. It's actually with the most completed version, which includes some cards that we don't have. So up until then, I'm gonna have to try to see what I can do with what we got. I have my Ancient Warrior monsters in my hand, but I also do have a Fire Fist Raven that I can then send off for All Mirage. Getting the Raven off of the 10 key and then sending him to the grave to then get Tensu will allow me to get another summon. This time I decide to go for Zhogong, and just to kind of set myself up with some sort of battle defense, I'm going to end up putting Changban Bridge in my hand. Now Changban is another one of those cards that again we might have to take out but it really just depends on what we got. I set two more cards and then I pass it over to him. So reigning card games, and as most people know, with Thunder Dragon decks, they tend to really work around banishing. And it is, in my opinion, probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest, chaos-based deck of this format, right? I remember the days of old when Chaos Dragon and uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon and Chaos Sorcerer were some of the strongest cards but the viability and the sort of adaptability that Thunders have is very, very impressive because they're able to really just banish off regardless of what you do, and they can utilize a lot of different cards such as Aloof Lupine, Gold Sark, Necro Valley, Dimension Shifter, there's a whole lot of things. If you're ever thinking about making a really, really good remove from play deck and you don't particularly want to play Grenmaju, I'd encourage you to try out Thunders. So, he discards, or rather he banishes, the Battery Man, and we decide to Imperm. Uh, I'm gonna Imperm the Lu Aloof Lupine just to make sure that he can't really use any effects or activate any spell cards. It might have been a little bit too late, but I don't want to have him really set up and get any pluses off of it. Um, unfortunately though, he sends it to the graveyard alongside his other Thunder Dragon to get Cross Sheep. Um, Aloof Lupine and the Thunder Dragon, I believe one of the cards, lets him search for the Thunder Dragon Fusion. And just like Invocation, that's one of possibly my most hated cards. Now, uh, Delinquent Duo runs, again, a Thunder Dragon, Alistair, Invoked, Dogmatica, I have no idea, honestly. Uh, Brio, if you're listening to this, you can let me know in the comments how badly I've, like, misrepresented your deck. Um, but the case in point is that you're able to also kind of, like, push Alistair in here, because Invocation is a generic fusion card that you can use to summon out either Thunder Dragon, uh, Titan, or any of the invoked Mechaba, or any of the other invoked cards at your disposal. So, uh, Thunder Dragon, sorry, Thunder Dragon Fusion then activates, however, I Cosmic Cyclone it because I do not want it to hit the graveyard. I'm going to try to banish this card, that way there is no recursion, and there's no way that Raining Card Games is able to get it back. But at the cost of 1,000 life points, I am not going to be able to stop a Titan from hitting the field. However, I do have Changban Bridge, and that might save me for at least a battle phase, 
as long as raining card games doesn't activate a thunder monster's effect. So, you know, what are the what are the odds that he might not activate a thunder dragon monster's effect and destroy all of the cards that I have? Well, if he decides to or if he doesn't, we still have the all mirage there that can possibly or potentially protect us. Cross Sheep is going to thankfully uh, bring back the Aloof Lupine, and then the Thunder Dragon Matrix is going to then activate, causing Titan to chain, which will allow him to destroy a card on the field. As long as he doesn't go for the Zhogong, I don't have to trigger off all Mirage's effect, but I'm really about to see what he goes for, and it's kind of going to just be really just dependent on if he decides to destroy either Chongbon or Tensu. Seems, seems like he's going to go for the Tensu effect instead, so we might actually be able to survive this turn. If Changban hits the Grave before I'm able to use its effect, which it does here, we're not going to be able to really get any pluses off of it, and the main point of it is basically to send Changban to the Grave at the start of the battle phase, so that way we can prevent any attacks on our Ancient Warriors. I could then trigger off all Mirage's effect, thus uh, keeping my Zhogong able, or rather sort of defensive, from any other destruction type of abilities, but we're not really able to do much here. IP Mascarena hits the field and then Synchro summons, or rather Link summons with Cross Sheep, summoning out Unchained Abomination, and this is where the insanity ensues. So Unchained Abomination is one of the, I would say, best Link 4 cards. It has such a crazy effect because all it depends on is anything being destroyed and then it can chain off its own other effects. So, like a dummy, I actually let him run into the All Mirage, which just really is not the best plan here. So All Mirage is going to get destroyed, which will then allow Unchained Abomination to basically just destroy another card on the field. Raining Card Games decides to destroy my, uh, <laughs> my Zhogong. I do have Changban in the graveyard, I could activate it to potentially save myself a turn, but it wouldn't even matter because at the end phase, Unchained Abomination would still get to destroy another card. So. At this point, it's like we're really kind of like hoping or rather waiting on death's door just so that way we don't get taken out. I take the 3200 from the Thunder Dragon Titan and I think that that might be it, but I'm able to get out another monster and hopefully or potentially uh, summon something to give me some sort of defense. Uh, but it's not really going to matter in the long term here. <laughs> and this is kind of a spoiler. We're able to set up something. I get the, the Zhang Yuan and I'll special summon him in defense position. Uh, just so that way I can save myself from taking too much damage. Um, and I believe that's kind of going to just save me for a turn. So depending on what I top deck, if I get a Dark Ruler no more. Or if I'm somehow able to, you know, top deck into any of the Kaijus that I have. Then we'll see about that. But... Destroying the Zhang Yuan activates Unchained Abomination's effect, thus getting rid of the Tensu. I kind of needed that card to summon, uh, so I'll set two, and then I'll turn it over to Raining Card Games. But that's pretty much it for the end of the duel. Unchained is going to still destroy because it happens on both players and phases. There goes my three visits, and spoiler alert, we don't end up winning this one. The next duel, however, it's going to be kind of interesting. So we're up against this person named Azazel, or Azazel. Um, and this is a fairly interesting duel just because I was looking for someone that was running a more up-to-date, I guess, current meta deck. But facing off against Dark Worlds is interesting because they can always use most of the Forbidden cards, including Forbidden Droplets. So we're going to try to see if he is able to pull it off, but he ends up starting off with a fairly, like, easy field. Nothing really, uh, intenseful. And with the Superbia in the graveyard, there's really, like, nothing that we kind of have to watch out for. He doesn't stop the Tenki, so that allows me to then get off my uh, sort of Raven, and then I'm going to able to go into Sunmo, and also have the three visits there, which will allow me to go for an extra search. Now I'm relying on Juga Kong there, just so that way I can potentially uh, negate whatever that back row card is, but it doesn't seem like he's going to really activate anything. I end up going for Zhang Da, and I'll be able to get the 2700 extra attack points off of him. But then I also see that I can go for a little bit more damage, and I kind of don't want Superbia to be in the graveyard just in case he intends on bringing back anything from his grave. So we'll summon out the Zhang Da. I'll go for that. He ends up battle fadering me, so there is no damage that I can do. I'll set the Dark Ruler No More kind of as a bait, and we'll just leave our turn with that. And now it's his turn, so with battle fader stopping me, there's really nothing more I can do right now. And it's just going to really just depend on what he does this turn. He decides to go for the Relinquished Anima, summoning it in an attack position. 
and unfortunately we really have no out for that. I do have the Dark Willer no more, but unfortunately it's not a Forbidden Droplet. I can't activate it on his turn, so it's kind of just sitting there. We do, however, have the Zhuge uh, Kong, which is going to be the only attack target because Relinquish only has 2700 attack. It can't really do much uh, this time. I'm going to Normal Summon out my uh, Fire Fist Raven, and then I'm going to send it to the graveyard with uh, Sunmo's effect. He's going to go for Forbidden Droplet, sending two of his cards to the grave just to negate the effects of my Superbia and my Sunmo. However, the Raven's still going to pop off and I'll be able to get out Reborn Tengu. Thinking about what to summon here, I can either go for Fire Fist Eagle or I can go for Darumadal. I can also even exceed into uh, Honor Arc if I need to, but I'm not really going to go for that. Instead, I decide to summon out uh, Eagle, and Eagle will allow me to get another Reborn Tengu, and then that will allow me to get another Ten Key back to my hand, which I can then activate and just go for another Sunmo in the next turn. I'm not really going to be able to do much with what I have. So it's really going to be important for me to run over the Relinquished Anima. And looking at this field, I can either go for, again, the Boral uh, Load Dragon, or in this case, I'm actually going to go for something a little bit different just to kind of see if I can get a little bit more advantage. So I'll Link Summon off my Reborn Tengu and my uh, Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Eagle. I'll Summon out Darumadal. I'll send three visits to the Grave, which will allow me to then Special Summon out Sunmo. And now that his monster has zero attack, I'll go in with the attack for Darumadal, which will then allow me to get another card back to my hand. I think I'm going to go for Eagle, just so that way I can summon him again if I need to next turn. Uh, or I go for the Zhang Da. I'll end up attacking for 2,000, 29, and then 19, and more or less just leave his field up to what he needs. However, I am going to put uh, Abyss Dweller on the field because I don't want him to go for any extra summons that he may or may not have. And just in case he's able to really bring anything back from the grave, we kind of want to prevent anything from happening in his graveyard. So I'll overlay the two monsters, summon out Abyss Dweller, and really just kind of like hold off on that. And that gets me the win. So all in all, it went pretty well. We are able to get some wins and some losses. The deck's coming along nicely, and now that we finally have the Dark Ruler No Mores, we're pretty much all set to take on this next format. Moving forward, it's going to be really interesting because we still need a few cards, and like I mentioned in the last episode, I don't know where Sunmo went, but it seems like he has some sort of friend in mind that might be able to give our deck a hand. We'll have to see what that comes to in probably the next episode. But with that being said, again, make sure you check out all of the people. Big shout outs to those uh, that I chose to be a part of the Rival series. Hopefully, I hope you guys don't mind that I took some of your clips uh, <laughs> and included you in the video here. It was a really, really fun project. Now, if you're interested in wondering what your Starship rating might be, make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And join me here later on my stream today, so that way you guys can get some information on some of the other things that we have planned. Now again, the Zeus giveaway is still going on, so you guys can definitely be a part of that. Just make sure that you comment down below what your favorite Yu-Gi-Oh card is. And with that being said, I've been the artist with the fro, and that, my friends, is the show. Thanks for watching.